It says in the scripture they will make war with the Lamb. They're going to make war with the Lamb. They're going to worship the beast and the image of the beast. Are you listening? And this temple that's now being, it's already in the stages of being built. This temple that's going to be rebuilt. You say, well, Brother Joseph, I often wondered what happened to all that gold that was uh, at Fort Knox, and what happened to all that gold that was um, <clears throat> that was down there in the Twin Towers? Who took that gold, and where did it go, and why did they take the gold? You got to understand: to rebuild the Temple of Solomon, everything has to be done the way it was done back there. It's going to take tremendous amounts of gold, folks. Think about how much gold it's going to take. And what better to use than that gold instead of using uh, or is having to dig for more gold? Why not just use the gold that's already on the earth and get the people on a digital money system so that they, the, it frees up the gold? Did you just recently hear about the Rothschilds? The Rothschilds just said they're giving up all their gold. They're no longer going to have gold. Do you know why they're doing that? They want you to give up your gold. You say it can't happen. It happened already once. I believe it was during World War II. The president made the people give up their gold. It happened. And read your Bible. The scripture says they will throw their gold and silver in the streets. Why? Because it'll have no value. Are you listening? Probably a, a, a law will go out saying you have to give up all your gold and silver. And the people will be so angry about it, they're going to literally throw it out of, on the streets. Because right now, there's all kinds of talk right now. The best thing to, to be buying is gold and silver. Best thing you can have is gold and silver. There's a huge amount of talk about that right now. But then the Illuminati come along and say, no, gold and silver has no value. And what do they do? They throw it in the streets. Why? Because the gold and silver, they need it to rebuild the temple. All that gold, all those gold bars that was down there in the Twin Towers, it was confiscated. And nobody knows where it went. Well, I know where it went. That Jew that owned those towers, he is about building that temple. He's about rebuilding the temple. See, what you don't understand, folks, is that their plan is to rebuild that temple. That's what this whole thing is about, the rebuilding of that temple. Why? Because they believe, the Jews believe their Messiah hasn't come yet. Are you listening? Silverstein is a Jew. He doesn't believe his Messiah has come yet. They don't believe Jesus was their Messiah. So they're still looking for their Messiah. And so they've got to rebuild the temple. And the Bible says he's going to sit in the temple saying he's God. It's going to be the Antichrist. So why did the Twin Towers, why were they attacked? Those buildings were owned by a Jew. Mr. Silverstein. They did what they did to get the gold, but also they did that as a blood sacrifice. That was a sacrifice unto Satan. See, they call themselves Jews, but they're not. They're synagogue of Satan. Remember what Paul said? Paul said, they are not Jews that are outwardly, but they are Jews that are inwardly. So Silverstein may be a Jew outwardly, but according to Paul the Apostle, he's not a Jew. A real true Jew is born again, born Jew inwardly. So the scripture says they call themselves Jews and they're not. They're taking over the whole world right now. They're bringing their Kabbalah and the Zohar into Hollywood. And everybody seems to be just lapping it up. 
the rebuilding of the temple is going to become the most important thing in Hollywood. It's going to become the most important thing to everyone worldwide because of one reason, to prepare the way for the Antichrist. The false prophet is already in place. He's, he's the Pope. He is going to herald in this Antichrist that is coming. It's nothing more than Satan himself. It's all coming together, folks. It's all coming together. And it's going to be in the city that God calls Sodom and Egypt. That's where the Antichrist is going to sit. This is the abomination that maketh desolate. Now, it's going to, the Lord told me, He said, now you will see prophecy fulfilled so fast, my own people won't believe it, even though they see it before their eyes. Think about that. Now you're going to see fulfilled prophecy fulfilled so fast, my own people won't believe it, because it's going to be fulfilled so quickly. Everything's being put in place to the rebuilding of this temple. They already are preparing everything. They're preparing all the things for that temple. Remember what Jesus said about the temple? Peter was getting all excited. He says, oh, Lord, look at this. Look at this building. It's so beautiful. And Jesus said, see, not this building. Not one stone shall be upon another. Amen? It hasn't been destroyed to the degree Jesus said it was going to be destroyed. It's got to be destroyed to the point where not one stone will be upon another. Leveled. The temple has never been leveled as it's going to be. And you may not know this, but there are still stones left behind from the old temple, from the old wall, from Jerusalem, from, uh, Sol uh, from Solomon's uh, uh, kingdom. Still old stones, and there's all the time digging them up. So it hasn't been destroyed to the degree that Jesus prophesied that it would be destroyed. And so if Jesus told Peter to get his eyes off the, the building, if Peter was looking at the building, how much more are the people of this generation going to be looking at the building? Amen? But the overcomer says, it's going to be destroyed. Jesus said it's going to be destroyed. The abomination that make it desolate. He'll sit in the temple saying he's God. This is the Messiah of the Jews that are following the Kabbalah and following the Zohar. And if you didn't know this, there are just as many Muslims as there is Jews, if not more, that believe in the Kabbalah and the Zohar. And there you, have your, there you have your peace between the Palestinian and Jews, that agreement. And also, you may not have known this, but the United Nations, which was formed at the same time that Jerusalem became a, a, became a sovereign state, I believe it's in 1776, I can't remember the exact date. I think I'm right. Anyway, the point is, is that the United Nations is the world government. Guess where the judicial system is going to be run from? That's going to be over the whole world. Jerusalem. The judicial building with the, with the, uh, with the uh, pyramid on top of it, that's going to be where the Sanhedrin is going to be. Folks, it's all coming together, just like Jesus said it would. And he calls Jerusalem Sodom and Egypt. Babylon is right near Jerusalem. It's right there. Not very far away, is it? It's all coming together. See, this whole thing is coming down to the Middle East. It's all coming down to around Jerusalem. It's all going to be this battle that's getting ready to happen. World War III will turn into the Battle of Armageddon. It's all coming to pass, just like the Scripture says. Hallelujah. I didn't plan. I didn't plan in going into all that. 
And you remember, the Lord said He'll do nothing except He revealeth His secret to His servants. Amen? He'll do nothing until He first reveals it. So that tells me if God's revealing these things right now, things that I never understood before, that are being unveiled because it's about to come to pass. Go on the internet, do a search. You'll find that they're talking about it more and more every day. Getting the red heifers ready, getting all these things in, in place. Why is it an abomination that makes desolate? I'll tell you why. Because the sacrificing of goats and animals and the shedding of blood has been done away with in Jesus Christ. That's why it's an abomination. Jesus is the supreme sacrifice. He took the place of all the shedding of that blood in the Old Testament. Amen? There's no need of those ceremonial laws anymore. But these hard-hearted, stiff-necked Jews that insist that Jesus Christ is not their Messiah is going to accept this Maitreya, this Antichrist Maitreya that is a beast. And just recently, Benjamin Krem said it can, he can change his appearance at will from the most beautiful-looking uh, individual to the most grotesque. At will, he can change himself. Now, doesn't that sound like the devil to you? It's all coming to pass, just like the Scripture says. Stay tuned. As the Lord leads, we will share more with you.